Good morning, everyone. Can you, can you hear me in the back? Good, good. My name is Peter LaFond. I am the president of a small agency in, out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Um, my company is called My Internet Scout. And I'm also the co-organizer, or lead organizer this year, of the Wilmington WordCamp 2018. And um, so today I'm going to talk about backups and how uh, there's various strategies out there and you want the strategy where um, it will save your livelihood and your sanity. So how many of you are um, website admins? More than one website. How many of you are designers? Okay, how, <laughs> okay great. Um, how many of you back up your website? Great. How large is your, all right, let me ask you. No, I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> how large is your website? How many pages? Uh, well, to, I don't know, just hundred. A couple hundred? Okay. How long have you had your website? Well, five years. Five years, and you put a lot of resources into it. It probably takes you some time to publish each page, right? All right. So it would probably be devastating if you lost your website, obviously. Okay. So I'm going to talk about backups um, in, in a manner. Number one, backups should be your last resort when, when you try to um, reference it to bring your website back. There's many different methods. You have to figure out what's going on with your website when there's something wrong with it, such as the white screen of death. Um, but unusual day for me, this is, this, is, this is me when I'm having a good day as admin, right? You're just kind of kicking back. Uh, operations are going great. Now, this is, the, this is me <laughs> when I fa face something for the very first time that, what is going on here, right? And I got phone calls from my clients. So this is me on a bad day. And this is, when I first start out, this is what my month looked like. <laughs> right? So um, this talk is about moving from this month to this month. Right? Looks a lot better. But you got a couple bad days you got to work on. Um, I, I always say you, you really need those bad days to keep your spouse and your clients on their toes anyway. So. Um, Hazards websites face where backups are necessary. All of these are things I faced um, where a backup was necessary. Um, malware infections, server crash, data center network outages. Um, I actually had a terrorist related incident. The, uh, some sort of, I don't know if it was an organization or an individual, took over the, my client's website. Um, and it was a website I was managing, but they took over the entire server and transformed it in something horrible. Uh, and then the most popular one is the very last one, human error. Oops, I deleted my file directory. Um, that usually happens in FileZilla. Um, <laughs> so what is a backup? So what's a website backup? Again, first the the backup should be your last line of defense. It's not your first go-to. Um, again, there's a process you should have in place. You determine what's wrong with the website. And um, the, the, the reason why um, you don't want to go to your backup, ver the very first thing, because when you reinstall from a backup, there's a very good chance you'll, you have things that are lost. The most re recent material well, chances are it won't be there. So um, if you're, I always tell my clients, if you're like writing original copy for a post or a page, make sure you do it in Word and have a copy in Word before you publish or some other, um, uh, some other application, um, Evernote, Google Doc, that sort of thing. Um, I always, second, I always tell my clients when I, um, Talk to them about backups. Reevaluate. Re um, I ask them to reevaluate their mindset when it comes to backing up. It's not a copy 
of your, a backup's not a copy or a single file you copy and hold someplace. Backup is a system. And it's a process you have to be aware of or do every month and make sure it's working. And you, you also have to be able to, when, when you know, stuff hits the fan, you have to be able to take that backup and install it and know how to do that as part of the system as operating procedure. Uh, and, and again, think of it as not, not as a disaster recovery or catastrophic recovery plan. Think of it as more like an um, emergency operation, operating procedure. Because um, if you think of it as a disaster recovery, chances are you're not going to be practicing the recovery procedures. You're not, not going to have like a step-by-step, -step, this is what I do next. If this happens, this is what I do. If that happens, this is what I do. Um, so think, think in those terms. So let me talk about stuff I've observed in the wild. <laughs> These are real strategies I've seen, and some I do recommend, some I don't recommend. So strategy number one. Um, again, I go to a client, start talking about backups as part of my maintenance, and, and I say, what do you do for a backup? This is, what, you know, I'm going to tell you what I do. This is, what do you do? And, the, and um, this is what they say. What's a backup? Why do I need a backup? Um, usually I get a blank look on that. Um, but usually when I ask that question, I get a, a follow-up. My, my, my host automatically backs me up. Who here has their host automatically back up their stuff? And that's it. No, that's not it. <laughs> and the first time I, I lost something and the hosting company had to restore it for me, it cost me, I think, 175 bucks out of my pocket to get them to yeah. put it back from the tape. Yeah, I don't, I don't recommend that strategy. Yeah. Solely rely on the hosting company. It's great that they do it. That was many years ago. Yeah, it's probably the last time you, that happened. <laughs> first and last time. So the fact is, most hosts only, when they do actually, some hosts don't even back up. But when they do, and they tell you they do back up, they'll say, hey, we only back up and keep the last seven days. Um, and it's a rolling seven days, so the eighth day drops off. The oldest drops off the next day. And it's the same thing for, um, they also, um, if they don't do that, maybe they do every 30 days. And the, and the 31st day drops off as the days roll over. Um, unfortunately, that's great and everything if you need a recent backup. Um, but if your, your website got infected with malware, chances are you're identifying the malware outside that 30-day window. Um, and uh, one thing is none of these uh, hosts will provide a 3-2-1 backup solution, which is a real solution. And I'll, I'll mention that in a second. I'll talk about the 3 2 one um, And almost all have what I call the typical host guarantee. So you see them, they're, they're, they'll have, when you go to their website, you start looking up what do they provide in terms of backup. This is what they say at the very end of what they do. They'll never guarantee they'll be there. So strategy number three, I also see is um, I use Acme Draft. It's the most popular thing on the internet. But uh, I save a copy to my server. Who saves their, their backups to their server? No one. One of many. One of many. Well, that's good. That's good. Um, don't do that. Unless you're going to, you know, it's a protected directory or it's a. Um, Something you just want to, well, if they hack into your website, they can get a backup. But just if they, uh, if you just want to refer to something, maybe you're, you're, you want to back up if you're updating the website with all the plugins, you want to do a backup right before you do the updates, you, you could do that just for reference, quick, quick reference. Um, this was um, an actual official strategy of one of the clients I first, when I first met them, they were using. Um, so you're saying that this is a problem that's your sole backup? Yes. Not, not 
not saying you should do this, but you should also do something else. Yeah, so, so when, when I talk about backup, I'm talking about the complete backup of the website. I'm talking about the database, the database all the files, the, um, the whole structure of the WordPress setup, the installation. And I know there's different ways, there are different ways to back up. There's incremental backups where whenever there's a change, um, it'll just back up incremental things. Um, that's fine, but I'm when I talk about backup, you want the whole thing. You want at least one backup per month. And, and anything more would be like a business decision, and I'll tell you why. All right, um, strategy number four, um, AWS. I save it, I back up and save it AWS. This is someone that's, you know, starting to think about what they're doing. Um, this is a, actually a real solution, but it's, it doesn't have its faults. Who here backs up offsite into the cloud? What would you use? Google. Use Google. I, I, Google Drive, I like Google Drive. They, um, Dropbox. Dropbox, I don't like Dropbox. It's too easy to lose your backups. Uh, they don't conf when you delete it on Dropbox, when, they, when you delete it, there's not co no confirmation like Google Drive. Um, so you can actually delete stuff and not realize it. Uh, I like Google Drive because Google Drive actually scans for malware. Really? Yeah. Um, question? Sorry, what's AWS? It's Am Amazon Web Services. So you can, um, there's se several web services Amazon provides. Um, and you can actually select regions throughout the world. And you can drop, um, take your backup and have it sent to a bucket in a certain region, which is great. Yeah, it's really cheap. It's one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, way to store your backups in a cloud. Um, problem with this is that last year, AWS went down. And if you're in need of a backup, and this was your sole way of backing up or sole location where you placed your backups, um, you may not have gotten your backups for hours, if not days. I think they were down for almost an entire day. This outage was so bad last year that it, Amazon couldn't even go get to their dashboard to inform users in other regions that I was down. Who remembers this? Yeah. Um, so, um, here's the link to, to the article. Any, everyone tracking with me so far? Okay. Um, so at the, at the end of this, I'm going to, you know, there's a lot of Q and A, different things you can do. Um, but I'll just go through all the strategies real quick. So strategy five, so everything up until now, we're in strategy five, everything up until now is really stuff I don't recommend. I hate to tell you. If, if that's your sole way of backing up, um, there's a lot of um, ways it can just fail on you. Uh, so a real backup solution is what I call the three to one solution. This solution was um, coined by Peter um, Crow. Anyone know this solution? Anyone know Peter Crow? Peter Crow is a professional photographer and he started losing data. And so he, on his, on his hard drive, and he said, I need to come up with some sort of solution so I don't lose my data, I need backups. Anyone familiar with the three, two, one? This is, this is like the standard. Um, so three, two, one, let's talk about three, two, one. And yeah. What's that? No, I can speak louder. Okay. Three, two, one. All right, might want to write down these numbers. The three, two, one, the three is the total number of copies you'll be backing up in a particular instance. So if you back up once a month, for my clients, I back up at least once a month, the complete website. I also back up the database. Each of those backups have at, 
should have at least three copies for that backup month. Tracking? Total. That's the three. Two, the number two is the number of media types you're going to back up to. So you could put two of the three backups maybe on a um, hard drive in your office, and then the third backup, maybe you're going to put it on an SD card, uh, DVD, something like that, different media type. So this, this is um, just a little bit of redundancy. If, one, if the hard drive fails, you have another backup. The, the one is the number of backup copies that will be located off-site. So if you're in an office, whether it's your home office or it's like a regular off business office in a business center, you want one of the copies to be off-site. So when I first started out, I'm like, okay, I can't, I can't really keep, I don't have an office, I worked on my house, and I need to keep it someplace. So my mother lived in town, and I would take a copy to her house. So we, we had Sunday dinners almost every week. I'll just take it to her house and put it in a drawer in her desk and keep it there and once a month. Um, so there is some redundancy here. We're breaking down single points of failure, but there, there is a flaw. This is the flaw. This is Houston last year. And if you had a business like mine, and you're using a 321, and you had off site storage, on site storage, you know, it may or may not have survived. If you had off site storage at my mom's house and she lived down the street or a block over, it may or may not have survived. And if, she, if I had my server, um, in the, the metro area, it may not have survived. So this, this is the flaw. So, which leads me to my strategy. Strategy, strategy six. Ah. I use the 4-3-2 method. Not completely just yet, but I'm migrating to it. Um, so total, again, go back to the 3, 2, 1. The first number is the total number of copies. Second number is, second number is the total number of media types. And when I talk about media types, I, I mentioned SD cards, and I mentioned um, cloud storage just briefly. I view cloud storage as a media type. Because it has, it's not really, a, it is a hard drive, but it's also, there's redundancy built into it. So it's slightly more than just a, a hard drive. Um, and then I also put a copy in cold storage, which is the SD. So every month I'll have total number of four copies of each file type. So that one, one file type would be the database. Second file type would be the complete everything, the complete works of that particular website. And then um, I put a copy in the cloud, actually two cloud types. Um, I put in Google Drive and I also use iThemes. Um, what's it called? iThemes. They, they have a service called Stash. So I put it in Stash. And then I also have a server in Chicago. So I have, now I have two copies off-site. The key here isn't off-site, the key is actually different geography. Yeah, different regions, yeah. So I, um, Two copies off-site, so of each co of each instance, so I, c I can reach it anywhere. Um, so. 
Any questions on this so far? consider that one of your two locations? The, yeah, the regional locations. I don't really call, consider, like, Google, Dr Google Drive, they try to keep your, the, the, whatever you put in Google Drive, they try to keep it within your local re region so it's served quicker to you when you try to retrieve it. And so it could be in your region, it may not be in your region, it could be um, elsewhere. But you just, they won't tell you. So you, you have to like, have at least one copy off outside of your region in case something like a natural disaster. I mean, in, in, you know, in, in North Carolina, number one natural, natural disaster is hurricanes, right? And you have time to prepare. But if you're dealing with hundreds of websites, I, I, I deal with dozens of websites, and I'm trying to prepare an emergency for my household, and I don't have time at that point to start preparing a regional to, you know, storage for my clients. So, um, and when it comes to cold storage, cold st I put stuff on cold storage and on an SD card every month because I don't want the chance of something to get infected over the internet. We know there's flaws and vulnerabilities throughout the net, um, especially on routers and switches. Uh, we know that routers and switches are infected without question. It's just, we just don't know how much. We know there's millions that are infected with malware. Um, and and, and uh, security flaws. I mean, last year, was it last year or this year, we had a major security flaw with the Intel chips and AMD chips. And, it's, and that was completely unforeseen. So, uh, so I keep stuff in cold storage, and I keep it for up to 18 to 24 months. Um, so anything that's in cold storage would be my, that one, if I do need to go to backup and, and start retrieving stuff, I don't go to cold storage. I go to the cloud first. Um, because I, I don't want these SD cards to get infected, something. So the process is like, okay, customer comes to me and says, hey, I was trying to FTP stuff up to my website and I deleted all these file folders. And I thought it was something else and another, and I realized I'm, I totally messed up. I need a backup. I need to use the backup. And, I, and can you get it going? So I, I ask him a series of questions. Okay, that's okay, okay, okay. Check, check, check. Everything you tell, you're, you've told me you, we need to put the backup in. And I remind them the backup, your chances are you're going to lose your most recent, your most recent data. And are you good with that? Because we, we, if you're not good with that, we still have to try to figure out how to recover um, to find the most recent data. But if you're good with it, we'll put the backup in. Um, at that point, I go to the cloud service and download something off the cloud or a local storage drive. And I don't go to my SD card because I don't want to be plugging it in. Um, oh, even before that, I actually do a malware check on my computer. I have the client do a malware check on his computer just to make sure there's no malware before we start working. Um, well, well, I use several things. I use Microsoft uh, Defender every month to scan zip files, all the zip files, uh, whenever I do a backup. I also use, um, well, Google catches it. They'll, they'll tell you when it's uploaded if there's something wrong. Um, the, the one thing with Google Drive, if the file, the zip file's too large, it'll tell you, it's like, this file's way too large, I can't scan it. There's a limit in which like, you upload, like, that file, that file, zip file's way too large, we're not gonna scan it. So just be aware of that. I have clients who are multiple, multiple gigabytes when, after it's all zipped, and that's a single website form. Um, I have other clients that are just a 20, 30 megabytes when it's zipped, and um, it will, that will be scanned. Also, um, iThemes Backup Buddy, which is what I use. iThemes Backup Buddy is, um, 
comes with a security scanner. You, you had a question? Yeah, I, I had a situation where my virtual private server was hacked and malware was put on it, and it didn't matter how many backups I had where, because my hosting company would tell me, oh, the following files are infected, and I would restore from good backups, and two days later, all of those files would be infected too. And, um, and when I, I eventually took a course from iTeams about backing up, and they said, oh, if that ever happens, your hosting company will go and, and uh, remove all the malware from your virtual private server. My hosting company no. had no intention whatsoever of doing that. And I, I, had, to, I had to switch hosting company and, and then back up everything I had from... Um, from backups in order to um, get my sites back online. And it was one of these terrorist things where it was from Indonesia and it had all kinds of yeah. music and anime and, you know. Yeah, it's, cr it's it was crazy. A yeah. Um, if you ever get hit by malware, I, I recommend. So I cross my fingers. I, I try to do all the right things. I've never, once a client comes to me, I've never been hit by malware. Um, before they come to me, about 20% of my prospective customers, about 20% have active malware um, or, or residual of malware where the host went in and tried to do something to get it out. Um, and my, the customer didn't even know about it. It's like, I would say 17 to 20% of all websites I see. Um, you have a question? No? Okay. The, the one thing, um, I really like Backup Buddy, and I really like Updraft Plus. I'm, I've standardized on Backup Buddy. Um, some clients have this uh, Backup Plus or Updraft Plus installed. Um, both of them, you can have automatic backups. You can have schedules to backup to various clouds, um, destinations, such as um, Amazon, AWS, uh, Google Drive, um, and Backup Buddy has a stash. Now, the one thing, like I said, you have all these backups you're backing up, it gets expensive. It can get real expensive to back up in, in, in cloud storage and, and SD storage. Uh, a couple years ago, I'm a small business. I have about 40 clients, 40 websites, I, I, you know, give or take uh, 40. Um, and a couple years ago, it was, I could fit all my clients' websites on one SD card, 32 gigabyte, and now I can't even fit them all on a 64 gigabyte. Websites are just getting larger and larger and larger every year. And um, so that means more and more storage, especially if it's gonna be long-term storage. And this is what we're talking about here is long-term storage. Who here has, knows the size of their compressed website? No one? <laughs> what, what, what size is your compressed website? Mine's nine gig. Nine gig? That's pretty big. Um, a lot of videos. Yeah. So for all of our client sites, compressed, I think we're around 80 gigs, something like that. So that's for 160 sites. So. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, I, I have a lot, a lot fewer websites, and it's like over 62, 64 gig. And um, yeah, yeah, it's, it gets expensive. So there's some business decisions everyone needs to make. It's like, am I gonna make a backup every month and, 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 and apply it to this, either the 321 or the, what I do, the 432 or something similar? Um, because it gets expensive. And the frequency of the backup and the type of files is important to you. Um, and I, I can't tell everyone here, like, hey, you got to back up every week or every month. Um, it really depends on, you know, your budget. This is an important part of your budget, but, you know, you need to market your website, too. <laughs> and um, it's the whole purpose of having a website. But you have to, like, say, hey, I need to do this. Um, it's, it's, it's important. Um, In, any other questions? This is shorter than expected, but. How long did you spend restoring each of those backups? 
18 to 24 months. Yeah, you want to be able to store enough where you know you're going to have a clean file at some point if you get malware or something like that. Um, you can be touching the backup, not for reasons of malware. It could be you deleted. A lot, a lot of the backups I touch are reasons are, are because of human error. People deleting, and number one thing is people actually deleting directories on accident when they use FileZilla. Who here uses FileZilla or, or the file manager in cPanel? Yeah, it's, it, it's easy to de delete directories, especially if you're like doing stuff for the very first time. Um, or um, the first time I, I deleted a directory was I was actually working on FileZilla on three different websites. I had an instance of FileZilla on three different websites open. I got a phone call, and right when I was on the phone call, I go, okay, I'm just gonna push this button, because it can take some time to get rid of this stuff. And I hung up, I'm looking at the files, and I'm like, oh man, that was my website. <laughs> 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 and that was the last time I worked on FileZilla with multiple websites open. Um, so, um, Go, so if you get infected by malware, go, go to Security. Go to Security, find a, or you, well, you, there's a couple of choices. Um, if you're getting reinfected, there, there's a couple of things that are going on. Um, you could have a couple, if you have mo multiple websites on that same uh, server, and chances are a lot of people here will have uh, a shared server, and you can be in the shared server, it could be cross-contamination going on. And there's nothing you can, you can clean your website and be infected the next day because of cross contamination. Or it could be not because of cross contamination, is that you saw, oh, there's the code where the malware is, I'm just going to delete it. Well, there might be a whole bunch of other code elsewhere you're not seeing, and it just comes back. Um, so if you get malware, I say try to find a clean, uh, number one, first thing you should be doing is, or first option you should be considering is finding clean backup. Um, if you can't do that, go to Security and they'll clean it. Security.net. S-U-C-U-R-I dot net. I think WordFence also has a disaster recovery. Yeah, they do. Yeah, WordFence too. Yeah. And I think it's about a hundred dollars for for them to clean it. Clean up your website? Yeah, the, yeah. These the, these security companies are. I don't recommend trying to do it on your own so at all. Your website. So they'll clean up your website, and if you're on a shared server, I'd move to a new server. Um, well, first thing is, every website should have a firewall. Every website should be updated regularly. Um, all the plugins, the themes should be up to date. Um, I also recommend, highly recommend, using themes that have been audited by a security company and are regularly op audited or updated by their manufacturer. If, there, if you call, if you like contact a, a theme manufacturer and say, hey, do, do you audit? Do you have security? Security provides the service, and I think WordFence provides it too. Do you audit your themes on a regular basis? And they email you back and they go, yeah, we do. Okay, that's great. Uh, off the top of my head, I only know five manufacturers that do that. Um, and if they don't get back to you, that means they don't do it. <laughs> um, so, what, what was your original question? Oh, uh, using a, a host. So, using a host is important. Um, 
if they check for malware. There's not, I don't think there's too many hosts that actively check for malware. I think if they do, it's an add-on option, like SiteLock. I use uh, Flywheel. Yeah, I don't, I haven't used Flywheel. I use uh, SiteGround. Yeah, I'd recommend that. I, I use SiteGround, and my SiteGround account is a, um, a cloud VPS. And so I, a lot, when you get into the, v, the, the VPS aspect of hosting, a lot more is on, in my case, it's on me to do a lot, a lot of more effort for my clients instead of them doing the concierge service. Um, I, I really have, it's on me to do it. But I would never, never rely on your host exclusively for the backup. No, I don't. Yeah. But yeah, if, if they offer that service, that'd be great. That's, that's great. Um, I, I know SiteLock does that. As well. The thing about hosting services is that you're, if you have a problem, you'll find out what, what you uh, pay for. Because there's support yeah. usually, if you, you've got a cheap service and support sucks, then whatever you say, you'll burn just going through their support. Yeah. Yeah, there's. I use SiteGround and I use um, WP Engine. Um, I know Flywheel is a good one. And um, there's a couple of other good ones out there that I, I, I've moved, I migrated away from, I'm not gonna mention, but for various reasons, um, I had to migrate away from because they didn't, it was very difficult dealing with them. Um, they'll bill me um, for things I canceled like a year ago. Why am I still being billed for this? That sort of thing, it's just craziness. Not for hosting, I, yeah, I, I, I do use 101 for um, ordering domains. I, I was going to mention Pantheon is a really, really good one. That's a very good one. Uh, very, very, very expensive, you know, you're gonna, some of their hosting plans are over $150 a month just for one site to host it, but their speed and stuff is ridiculous to build it. So it's for the right client, it's awesome if you have an enterprise kind of level, but it's like flywheel, but higher. Yeah, well, all the hosting companies have different levels, and there's a reason why they have different levels. Um, and you can't expect, and you, you really can't expect your business to be run on the lower level stuff if you're serious about your company or your business. Um, I heard good things about Pantheon, for sure. Uh, I, I just never used them. Yeah, I, I would use, yeah, all, all four of those, uh, WP Engine, Pantheon, SiteGround, Flywheel. Any other questions? Would you modify any of this in an e-commerce situation? Yes, so well, back to business practices. So I can't tell you what you should be doing for your business. So if you're, you have a blogging site, right, and you maybe update the blog maybe once a month, just do a backup once a month. If you have a blogging site and you blog weekly, you might consider weekly, maybe not. Or maybe twice a month, or maybe just still once a month. Um, it's, it, this stuff gets expensive. The hold this stuff gets expensive. The, there's an, another method where you can back up every day for, for a week and every week for a month and just have that stuff drop off. So you, have the, you can have the most recent, say, say something went down today, you, you could back, um, recover from yesterday's backup. That's, that's a method as well. But what I'm talking about here is you gotta start doing something. Don't rely on your, your host to do it because there's always a caveat. If you read the fine print, almost always a caveat. It's like, oh, we do all this for you, but don't expect us to have it. <laughs> So, um, and then e-commerce, to answer your question about e-commerce, it really depends how often you get orders and you wanna, and what, how expensive those orders are. You wanna, and, and, and the software that you're using on your server um, is important. So if you're doing a lot of order processing, you probably wanna do it every day. Even if you do get an order every other day, you probably wanna do it every day. Um, and then, and then maybe hold two weeks worth of backups. And then from there, have a monthly backup. 
Now, there, there's some hosts that allow you to download the backup. So they do the backup for you, maybe a 30-day backup, and then you can go in, and this is like WP Engine, you can go in the WP Engine and download the backup that they've, or initiate a backup manually, or download an instance and, and save it that way. Um, some hosts uh, don't let, allow you to do it at all, and you have to rely on their support staff to go and uh, install the backup. And you can't, you can't store the backup like I'm explaining here, um, which is not good. Any other questions? Yeah. So I, I have a monthly maintenance plan for my clients. I, uh, I charge $70 a month for basic maintenance, and more sometimes based upon the configuration of their website, um, what they have. So it's $70 per WordPress instance. So some clients have multiple WordPress instances. And if they have a second or more, I'll charge an additional $20 or $30, depending upon what it is. And then I'll charge more if um, they're an e-commerce website. I, I find that e-commerce websites are the ones that give me the most trouble. Um, I'm always touching them, like, what's going on here? <laughs> um, and, and ticketing sites, which is a subset of an e-commerce site. Um, so that would cover, you can actually see what I, my coverage for maintenance. If you go to myinternetscout.com forward slash maintenance, and I update the maintenance every year. Yeah, so if they're not under maintenance with me, I don't, I just don't do backups for them. Because it's, it's expensive. I, I, my, my firm probably just in software services spends about, depends on the month, maybe 22, no, about 2,000 to 2,200 a month just in software services. So when I have a client, and I don't know if any, anyone here was at the last, at the last um, talk. Um, I don't. I, I can't afford one hundred fifty dollars clients. <laughs> um, it wouldn't even cover my overhead. Um, so, but uh, yeah. So, does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Anything else? Any anyone have like problems like trying to set up? Um, backup. I, uh, I know Backup Buddy is like $80 a year. It's worth its weight in gold. Uh, you can schedule it. You can have multiple schedules. So you can like schedule it so it backs up to G Drive one week, and then two weeks later it backs up to um, S3 or Rackspace. Backup Buddy, uh, both Backup Buddy and um, Updraft Plus, they are plugins. Um, and then you can schedule, you can do manual backups for either. Um, backup Buddy allows you, and again, I standardize on that. Just makes things simple for me. You can, you, you have a choice. Like you can have like a set up a schedule where it backs up just the database, or it backs up just or the complete system, or just files. Um, and then you can say, hey, for this instance on a schedule, I want it to back up on the 28th of the month. And then store a copy on the, compu on the, on the server if you want to do that. Or you can have it sent to your Google Drive account. And, and you choose the file folder it's sent to. You can configure all that. Or, yeah. 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 So that's kind of that's more convenient, but it's off of AWS on Google Drive. 
Yeah. And, and bit, I like backup buggy, so I use it for migration too. Um, and, and the key is, is like, you gotta practice it. P practicing, well, once it's everything's backed up, practicing migrating the website or restoring a website in an account. Because the time comes, you need the backup, and you've never restored a backup, you're gonna be so stressed out, I can't even tell you. It's in, if you're a designer agency and, and, and you've got clients breathing down your neck of what's going on, and I, I have this one client, something ever goes wrong, it's like they get on the phone with me um, almost instantly. Like, it's like I'm already working on it, but they're like, they know about it at three o'clock in the morning. I'm like, how'd you know about that? Um, so I, in, in, in terms of maintenance, I try to um, predict things and, and, and try to say, okay, figure out, you know, scenarios that could happen and try to um, avoid those scenarios as best as possible. I have another thought on these. One, one indicator we've got, and not such a good host, is if you run one of these plugins and it won't complete, you memory times out or whatever, and sometimes one will do better than the other depending on your host. I've noticed that too. Sometimes Drum Plus will run yeah. and vice versa. So it's good to kind of test that on whatever environment you're on and figure out what works. Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. Um, Backup Buddy has issues on uh, GoDaddy, the GoDaddy configuration. Um, I don't know what it is. It's how GoDaddy configured their accounts, but they, in, within Backup Buddy, it says if you, we've Backup Buddy will say, hey, we've discovered you're on GoDaddy, or you're using WordFence. Try to try to um, set these settings in the Advanced Setting tab, and um, so. Certain things um, they identify and they'll they'll give you advice right on the screen. Um, their support's awesome too. And um, with backup, buddy, if you ever get the four thousand one error, have you gotten that? The four thousand one error means you've run out of storage space on your on your server. So if you ever get that with backup, buddy, you'll get you'll get errors like zipping errors, that sort of thing. Um, if you run out of storage, and, and so that means you need a larger account. And what you don't want to do is be storing a whole bunch of backups on your local server, your live server, because it'll just eat up your storage. And next thing you know, it's, it's like, okay, my, my site's down. You think it's something really bad, and all you have to do is go and delete the, the backups. And so it's, I just don't like storing backups on the server. <laughs> And it's not really a backup, it's more like a copy. They, you know, you probably, you could, you could use it if you're like retrieving the backup if you're doing updates, but it's not good practice. Um, anything else? You mentioned site lock. Yeah. Do you recommend that or um, For firewall, I usually use WordFence or Security. I use site lock. Yeah, I'm not. I, I'm somewhat familiar, not enough to give solid advice hey, on. I, I have site lock because I have a community forum that um, I get about 300 posts a day from people all over the world, and and if I lose one day's worth of data, it turns out that was the day they wrote the most brilliant thing they've ever written. <laughs> and they can never possibly recover that, and and it's all my fault. And that site got hacked, and it took a while, like I said, like I described, to, to get out of it because I had to move to a different hosting company because my hosting company was never going to clean my, my virtual private server up for malware, and I didn't know enough to clean every single file on the whole server. Um, I'm not a Unix administrator or anything. So um, I switched to a cheaper hosting company, and then I put SiteLock on for $100 a month. And you know, I ask my users for a little bit of money, and they, they pay enough for it so that they pay for the SiteLock. It's 100 bucks a month, but since I got it, everything's perfect all the time, and I've never had, you know, a new night. Um, so I, I, they, they will keep malware away um, for that amount of money. It's, that's, their, that's their top service, but... Yeah, the, the one thing that they, they will actually actively take out the malware um, or inform you that there's malware there. Um, 
but the mail will come back if it's a patch that you need and you haven't patched that piece of software that's vulnerable. Um, that, that's, you know, you gotta do updates. That's the number one reason for not getting hacked, or best way not to get hacked and, and have just a basic firewall. I've noticed with site lock, if you're on like that, but you're on a higher level plan, that's good stuff, but if they're yeah. entry level site lock, it's not, not so good. True, true. Yeah. yeah. But, but, but when you do pay for that upper level plan, and if you ever do have a problem, you can call them up and they instantly know what's right. You know, yeah. 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 been super professional. So it, one difference, too, is security, security specifically, specifically WordPress. So that so if it's a WordPress site, like I think they, they may have the edge a little bit on that, um, where site lock is, is agnostic. Yeah. And I'll check the IP addresses of your, where your website is. If you're on a shared server, your IP address is shared. And you can actually do a who is and find out how many other websites are sharing that, web, that IP address. So there's probably a dozen so, or so on mine, on my server. But if you go to like a typical popular hosting company, no names mentioned, but... Um, <laughs> Uh, they oversubscribe their shared servers. I, I actually saw as, much, as many, just recently, in the last few days, uh, as many as 900 websites on a single IP. Um, it's just crazy. Cra I mean, isn't that crazy? 2,000? Yeah, and this is, this is a very known brand, a well-known brand, and it's like, you gotta be cr crazy. Um, to, to have a site on IP like that. So if you ever get hacked, do the right thing, re, you know, use one of your clean backups or get your website clean by security and then move to a new server. Because that, that, that server could be the issue. And a lot of times the hosting company will not acknowledge that to you. They will not, they, they deny, 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 deny. Because they know that we talk. <laughs> We talk to each other as, as designers and agencies, and there's word camps every week, and, and word gets out, and they, they deny and deny and deny. But yet, like 20 per, I can see 20% of the new customers that come to me, and it's like, I can see that the host will, would, like, they comment out, like, these files that, like, what are these files? And you, then you realize it's old malware. Um, they tried to neutralize. Um, so who's going to get a backup system going? <laughs> uh, you really can't afford not to have one. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the, the one thing about Backup Buddy is when I migrate sites, you know, you learn how to use Backup Buddy to migrate the site. And, and then when it comes time to use it for restoring the website with the backup, it's the same process, which is nice. Highly recommend backup buddy. So if you have any questions, I'll be at the, the happiness bar, or you can email me. Um. Oh, this, this, again, this is what we're trying to achieve, right? I'll go back, right there. Ha, ha, ha.